and in humility acknowledge that we need His mercy, His provisions, His healing touch. You know, many times, um, ako, I'm, I'm guilty of this. We don't want to receive help kasi maikog or mahiya tayo, no? We just want to give and give and give. Okay, pag ikaw yung nag-give, but at this time, one of our members here called me, sabi niya, Pastor, I want I, I want to be made useful. Sabihin ko sa akin, what do you need? Give me a list. Sabi ko, we're okay lang po, kuya. We're really okay, promise. We have everything here lang. Sabi niya, no, it's unfair. You always taught us to be a village. Sabi niya, you always taught us to help one another, to be there for one another. Now let us know how can be a village to you and your family this time. And it takes, um, you, you, oh nga, no, I need help. And when it comes to the blessings, when it comes to the healings, the shalom of God, it's, it's the same thing. Before we can be a channel of God's healing love, we need to accept and embrace and embrace and we need to let that love heal us first. In Scott Saul's book, Irresistible Faith, sabi niya, if we are to become irresistible to the world around us with our irresistible faith, if we want to live, I like yung, yung theme of, of the life of our coach, Coach Pink. If we are to live a radiant life and leave a radiant legacy, then we must allow the love of God to bring transformational healing in our lives. And it starts with taking the posture of humility. Sabi nga po ni Scott Sauls, the beginning of blessedness and the beginning of real change that will cause the world to notice the light in us is not the realization that we are okay. Okay? But the realization that we are not okay. Ngayon po ang namin nagsasaya yung mga Christian, mga judgmental, mga self-righteous yan sila, lahat na. But sabi niya, it is not in becoming convinced that we are superior to everyone else, but in recognizing that we are no better than anyone else. It is not in believing that we are strong and capable and confident, but in accepting that we are frail and incapable and weak while also being fearfully and wonderfully made. It is not in thinking that God expects us to be awesome and printed up and all put together, kung baga, a perfect maani niya, or no, but in gaining confidence that God is first and foremost in Christ, cause us to be forgiven, loved, faithful, and free. Sabi niya po, it is from this humble place and only from this place that we have any chance of growing into the virtues of Christ. It is only when we can cry out, God, be merciful to me, a COVID person, a sinner, that we are sent home justified, blameless in His sight, and confident in His love. So humility is when we acknowledge before God how sick we are. Maybe with our attitude, maybe with our worries and fears, it's being real and authentic before God about our struggles and weaknesses. I remember one of my struggles, and I must have shared this many, many times, but one of my struggles is that I would easily, yung pata-pata pa po ako, I would easily fall in love. No, madali po ako ma-emotionally attach. So, kahit sino, kasama, magkasama tayo, lagi tayo makausap, ayan, good luck sa'yo. But it, it, traces back, we would trace it back to my father hunger. And there was a time when I would tell the Lord, Lord, sana iba na lang yung struggle ko. Pwede anger na lang instead of father hunger. Pwede anger, mas dignified, mas cool yun. But yung struggle ko for affection and attention and yun, you know, it's it's just so undignified, so yuck, so embarrassing, so, so shameful. And I wanted so much to break free. I wanted so much to change. But I just can't help it. Diba? Yung feel na feel mo, yung gusto kong bumait, pero di ko magawa. And only when I became honest with the Lord and with my mentor that slowly the healing process started. Yeah, let me go back to what Scott, Scott Saul said. Sabi niya, we must not try to pull ourselves by our bootstraps. Rather, we must realize that we don't even have boots. We must not merely think that we have problems. Rather, we must understand that we are our own biggest problem, our own worst nightmare, our own worst enemy. And then he quoted po si Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones sharing a similar perspective on our human condition. 
sabi po ni, ni DM Lloyd Jones, the first thing you must realize as you look at that mountain which you are told you must ascend is that you cannot do it. That you are utterly incapable in and of yourself and that any attempt to do it in your own strength, you know, the more na we try na talagang magbago, magbago tayo, maka, makaligtas or maka-free tayo sa ating situation, no? Is a proof. Sabi niya, the more the more na talagang ina-attempt natin doing it in our own strength is proof positive that you are you do you have not understood it. Again, sabi ni Scott Sauce, God's call on our lives then is first and foremost not a call to action, but a call to brokenness and contrition for a broken and contrite heart He will not despise. In short, God's calling first and foremost is a calling to be in a posture of humility. We all have different weaknesses. We all struggle with different soul sickness. We all have different levels of woundedness. But when we come to Jesus and in humility ask for His forgiveness, for His healing love to transform us and set us free, we become healed and free indeed. That's why we must always remember that God's love is a healing love. This is so beautiful po, sabi ni Brennan Manning, Define yourself radically as one beloved by God. Can you tell the person next to you, maybe in your home right now, tell that person you are a beloved, you are one beloved by God. Sabi niya, this is the true self. Every other identity is an illusion. And Jesus paid a high cost to make us that beloved of His. Sabi nga in Isaiah 53, 5, But He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. That healing becomes ours as we take the posture of humility towards God, towards others. When when and and, and the great thing here is that we are not only healed, but we become stronger. You see, humble people are strong people, humble people are powerful people. Why? Sabi nga in James chapter 4, verse 6, But the grace that God gives is even stronger. As the scripture says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. When I think about Jesus, it's, it's so amazing no? how he lived a very uncomfortable life. He was very poor. People misunderstood him. He was accused, judged, lahat na lang. His own family didn't believe in him. Even his closest friends abandoned him. He experienced rejection insults, spotted upon, he went through so much pain and unimaginable suffering, eventually died a criminal's death, and yet Jesus was never bitter. He was never he, he was never angry or cynical. You know, his spirit remained tender. He was very forgiving. Kumbaga, his soul was so pure. His heart was not hardened. Why? Because he clothed himself with humility. He clothed himself with humility. Sabi nga ni Jordan Peterson, Life is suffering. And suffering can make you resentful, murderous, and then genocidal if you take it far enough. So you need an antidote to suffering. So ano po yung antidote ng suffering? Instead of becoming hardened, instead of becoming bitter, what's the antidote to suffering? Now we remain having a tender Spirit, a tender soul, a tender heart. The secret or the antidote is humility. Again, suffering is inevitable, but when there's humility, it's humility that brings hope and healing to our pain and suffering. Things get better when there's humility. Our relationships become better when there's humility. We become stronger when we take the posture of humility. But the other thing very important to have the shalom of God in our lives and to be able to share it to the world, we must allow the Spirit of God and His Word to examine the condition of our lives. We need the Spirit and the Word of God to examine our, our hearts, our lives. And so for many of us, marami po sa atin, we do a yearly executive checkup, we do the lab works to see if okay lang yung blood sugar, blood pressure, yung heart natin, yung liver natin, whatever. For some of us, meron pa nga tayong gadgets, no? meron tayong rings or watches connected to an app which tells us kamusta yung pulong natin, kamusta yung 
naka-RAN ba tayo? Um, it tells us kung, kung kamusta yung heart, yung resting rate, heart rate natin. Tapos makikita doon yung respiratory rate natin, yung heart rate variability. Grabe, mag-check kung ano yung condition ng, ng physical, ng literal na puso mo. It can tell whether we're so stressed out, we have not recovered, and so it's not good to do work out, you have to rest. Yung, yung ganun po kagalit yung mga apps na yun. But, you know, if we do all that to our bodies, to check on our bodies if we're, 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 we're good, then we must have the same vigilance, diligence, and commitment to allowing the Spirit of God to really search us. Maybe, minsan hindi natin alam, our spirit is already infected with the negativity and toxicity of the world. Maybe our soul is sick with loneliness because we have isolated ourselves too much. Nakalimutan na natin yung, yung village or minsan lumalayo tayo, minsan ganun po, no? Maybe there's envy and jealousy kasi hindi pa umaabot ng 1 million yung followers natin sa, 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 sa um, social media. Or maybe our mind is just ruled by, by fear. Sabi nga ni, ni, ni Coach Noel, it's love and fear. The feelings and emotions of love and fear are strongly connected. Kung maga, failure to know the real condition of the inner life will definitely bring sickness to our outer life. Yun po yung sabi ni Dr. Bruce Lipton, a cell biologist. Lagi po natin siyang kinukod dito. But I want you to listen to how he talks about how love will make us healthier and how fear will actually make us sicker. Let's watch what this is. In all biological organisms, there's something referred to as the biological imperative. The biological imperative can't be found by biologists. There's no place they say, oh, here it is in the cell. But what it represents is the drive to survive. When we start to feel that our life is threatened, it's not a conscious at first. It's a gut feeling. It's visceral. Something in my gut says something's not right. This is the biological imperative looking at your potential future in the world that you're living in. And what we really have to recognize is that people are feeling it in their gut. The world is not right. It's not right. And I go, well, this is wonderful because this is a feedback system that's saying the world in which you live is not in harmony with you. And therefore, what it really means is that we have to change how we influence the world in our own way. And it says that if we start to change and send out love instead of just receiving fear, that the love we send out has two, two aspects. Yes, there's an external consequence of love. It influences everyone and everything around me. There's a profoundly different chemistry if I have a thought of love coming into my body, which you can feel. When you're in love, you can feel it. Yes, your cells are bathing in chemistry of love. But when you have fear, it's a different chemical response. It gets you girded up for response, protection, walling you off from the outside. I don't want that thing to come in and take care of you know my inside. And I say, well, what's the relevance? And the answer is very simple. The chemistry released by the brain in fear shuts down the growth mechanism of the body, shuts down the maintenance of the body to conserve energy. And the biggest thing is there's only one consequence, and that is disease and illness. And it turns out, 1% of disease on this planet is connected to genetics. 90% of disease or more is lifestyle and the psychology of love and fear. 90% and says, be in love and your body will be maintained and your immune system will be at peak performance. Be in fear and the game is over. Gabi no, be in love and your body will be maintained your immune system will be at peak performance. But be in fear and the game is over. Be in fear and the game is over. Si Dr. Joe Dispenza po, the neuroscientist, uh, chiropractor, and um, a best-selling author, sabi po niya in that book, You Are the Placebo, sabi niya, so it makes sense that we should concentrate not merely on avoiding negative emotions like fear and anger, but also, he said, unconsciously cultivating heartfelt positive emotions such as gratitude, joy, excitement, enthusiasm, fascination, 
awe, inspiration, wonder, trust, appreciation, kindness, compassion, and empowerment to give us every advantage in maximizing our health. You see, to live the shalom life, it's an absolute necessity that we not only focus, that we are able to become aware, no? Ano yung mga negativity? Ano yung mga negative emotions? But at the same time, we should really focus on allowing the Spirit to examine us and check the temperature of our hearts. Sabi nga sa kata natin, on fire, is it on fire? Mainit ba siya? Is it overflowing with joy? You see, the great king of Israel, si King David, despite having wounds from all kinds of battles, emotional, sexual, mental, or, or spiritual, he was still called a man after God's own heart. Bakit po? Dami pong stories, but sa kanya, pero ito po yung makikita mo na ba't ganun na lang yung puso ni David. Psalm 139, yung prayer niya po, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Kung baga, time and time again, kailangan po natin itanong sa mga sarili natin, offensive ba yung pananalita ko, Lord? Offensive ba yung attitude ko sa mga katrabaho ko? Offensive ba yung reaction ko? Lord, offensive ba, yung, ba ako sa kaibigan ko? Or offensive ba ako, Lord, sa anak ko or sa asawa ko? What, what is my effect on others? Do I have this healing effect? Or do I have this toxic effect? Lord, search me. Tingnan po natin yung si David po. No? Grabe po yung, yung understanding niya, the depth of his understanding on how important it is to allow the instructions of God to keep examining us and to really lead us towards Him and towards healing. Sabi po again in Psalm 19 this time, sabi niya, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Minsan po lang tayo ng insight. Minsan po lang tayo ng joy. Minsan po lang tayo ng, ng clarity. Minsan yung soul natin, walang ka fire fire, no? But sabi ni David, it's, it goes back to the commands of the Lord. Sabi niya, reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are, listen, warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. And then look at how he connects it. He connects it with, with the condition of our hearts. Sabi niya, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. And then verse 14, again, the same yung prayer niya sa Psalm 139. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I remember asking Coach Pink po, if meron pa siyang pwedeng maibilin, ano yan, maihabilin, no? If there's one thing that she would, I, I need to really learn and keep learning, na dapat hindi ko makalimutan, if I were to become a faithful apprentice of Jesus, tinanong ko po, kung meron pa pong kailangan ko talagang balik-balikan para I will finish strong as an apprentice of Jesus, what would it be? Ito po yung sagot niya. Sabi niya, two things will prevent people from becoming true apprentices of Jesus. One, the desire to impress some people. And number two, the love of money. Be careful of these two. More and more, I appreciate what Coach Bing would always tell me. Kasi lagi, lagi po yan, slow down, eliminate hurry in your life. Don't be hurried. You see, learn to say no. Why? Kasi paulit-ulit po niya, yung sinasabi, we will never know what's already happening in our hearts. Kung baga, kung nga, no, we will never know that the desire to impress people has already crept into our souls. Sometimes the love of money is already lurking in our hearts. But sometimes yung mga motives natin sa Bisaya, wadinyo, wadinyo, nagabuliyang na lang siya. And not until we pause, 
not until we silence ourselves in the word of God, not until we enter into stillness before the spirit of God, will we know that we have a soul sickness already, that we have a spiritual sickness already. Kung baga, the soul always knows what to do to heal itself. But the challenge, sabi po doon, is to silence the mind. We need to hear the still small voice of God checking and and um, searching our hearts. But yun po kailangan na bigyan po ng space and time and um opportunity. Kumbaga, we really need to to open up our hearts to the Spirit of God. Kailangan talaga yung panahon so that the Word and the Spirit of God can examine the condition of our inner life. Sabi nga in Second. Timothy chapter 3.16, ito po yung, yung power of, of the word of God. Sabi po, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Minsan po, Coach Bing would teach us yung levels of transformation na it begins with begging. Lord, change me. Make me like Jesus. Allow me to really be an apprentice in every sense of the word and, and transforming, kumbaga. And so, it, it starts with begging, and then there's blind spot, no? So, minsan, hindi natin na-realize what's wrong in our lives. Lahat ng mga tao, alam nila, eh, grabe, nakapride ng kawa na. But for us, blind spot, kaya sabi niya, begging, 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 until you enter into beholding. Yung makikita mo na, marirealize mo na, oh, nga rin, may problema talaga ako sa ganyang issue. And then it says, it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Yun po yung word of God. You know, from begging to blind spot to begging again. And as we go to the word of God, we are able to behold what's, what are those things that really need the mercy and the forgiveness of God. And then as we continue with the word, as we enter into begging, then there's becoming. Sabi nga, God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. And so if we are to become channels of God's healing, of God's shalom, then we cannot neglect our time with God's Spirit, with the study of His Word and prayer. Failure to do so will, will make us weak and sick, Christ, sick followers of the way, sick followers of Jesus. I'm sure if you have been with us for um, quite a Sometime now, you know this. This is from Andrew Murray. Sabi po niya, little of the word with little prayer is death to the spiritual life. Much of the word with little prayer, konti lang yung prayer gives, is sickly life. But much prayer with a little of the word gives more life, but without steadfastness. Ang dali natin makapoy, ang dali natin mag-give up. No? But a full measure of the word and prayer each day gives healthy and powerful life. And so with the word, through prayer, under the loving gaze of the Spirit of God, let us bring our minds and hearts and spirit and let the love of God heal and transform us. But this is very important to be a channel of God's healing love and, and really bring um, shalom, the shalom of God, share it with, with others. We must make ourselves available in God's healing 